Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Meson African Motives, still on engineering science N3, November 2022, question paper, uh, now on heat. Uh, so you've got the question uh, five, which is uh, the one that uh, actually 5.1 is going to be difficult for us. Uh, I do not have the steam tables as a soft copy, but uh i i think you guys you you have seen uh in other videos that i've done on it i was uh, actually showing you the the steam table as it is now it's only because i just uh do not have the soft copy because now i'm using a soft copy uh there by then i was using a hard copy so i had it so i'm going to uh, see later on but for now let's just see the question and i'll just explain i'll just try uh, the data provided refers to steam, use steam tables to determine the condition of the steam, where the steam is wet, calculate the dryness fraction. Okay, they have told you that if the steam is wet, then calculate the dryness fraction. Uh, the 5.1, you are given the pressure at 900 kilopascals. Okay, that is uh, 900,000 pascals or 900 kilopascals, and the temperature is at 2. 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, guys, look at the temperature that we have, 250 degrees Celsius. Okay, that one is actually representing the super heated steam. Okay, uh, that's our super heated steam in this case. All right, then on 5.12, the pressure is at 2,5 megapascals. Okay, remember, mega means times 10 to the power of 6. So if you are to calculate this, uh, it will give us like two, 250,000, something like that. Okay. Uh, then we have got uh, H being the end of year of 200, uh, 2,700 kilojoules per kg. Okay. Uh, if we are to check, uh, if we had the steam table and also with the calculations show that, yeah, there is something, three marks, there's other calculations. So this is actually a wet steam. And from your steam tables, what we're supposed to do was to calculate or to, in fact, to find the value of, of uh, HFG, which is the end of, of, of steam, which is equivalent to 1939. So which value do you use? You use the pressure here at 2,000, at 2,5, you convert this to kilopascals, because these are the ones that shows in that uh, steam tables book uh, that it shows kilopascals, not megapascals. So you convert this to kilopascals. At least you can find that one. Uh, that's uh, 2,5 times 10 to the power of what? Times 10 to the power of 6. Then you simplify the 2,5, which is 2,5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, like this. All right. Uh, or it, it is going to be 2,500 kilopascals or 2,500 kilopascals. All right. Then you use... The, uh, the steam booklet okay so in this case guys i'm going to try by all means to redo this question using the the steam booklet so that you can see what i'm trying to say okay but we know that h weight is equivalent to hf plus x hfg okay so in this case what we need is to find the dryness fraction okay which is x so that means h weight minus hf if we transpose this, it's going to be negative, is equivalent to X HFG. So to find X, you divide by HFG. Both sides, you divide by HFG. So this can cancel. So X is going to be H weight, of which we are given, in this case, our H weight as uh, 2,700, which is our H weight in this case. That's 2,700 minus HF. Uh, that's HF. Okay, uh, from our steam booklet, we are going to find HF at this uh, pressure, at this pressure, okay? So you, you look at this pressure direct, your HF is going to be 96, that's 962. So like I was saying, guys, let's just see, okay? But uh, I'll try by all means to show you a, a, a direct using the, the soft copy, if I can manage to get that one, okay, a anytime soon. Okay, so if you are to simplify this, you're going to obtain 0 0.945, that was our X, okay? Then in 5.13, uh, we are given the pressure at 9 megapascal, uh, which is 9,000 uh, kilo, so this is same as 9,000 kilopascals, because 
Uh, remember, that's 9 times 10 to the power of 6, which means we've got 9 times 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 3, which is 10 to the power of 3, it's uh, the 1,000. Then the 10 to the power of 3 is the kilo. Okay, so that is what we have. So if you have to compare the temperature, you're going to see that your temperature, it gives us a, a dry saturated steam. So that's a dry saturated uh, steam. Okay, so I just hope, uh, but I know that most of us, we've got uh, a lot of confusion here. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to explain this using the steam table uh, as a soft copy, okay? Uh, on 5.2, we are given that an engineer uh, must design a steel door from a, for a room. The wooden door frame opening is, so take note, this is a wooden door frame, okay? The designer designs a steel door. So this is a steel door. So we've got a door frame and a steel door, okay? Uh, this is what we have. It's got, we've got something like this, okay? So let's say this is our door frame, okay? So we've got a door frame. Uh, that's our door frame. So the door frame measures 1,2 meters by 2,09 meters, okay? And 1,2 meters. Then we also have the door itself, the actual door. So this is the door. So on the door, we are given 1,19 by 2,08. So it's 2,08 meters and 1,19 meters. Okay, so these are two different things. If the temperature change is 20 degrees Celsius, so we are given the temperature change, we are already given, that's 20 degrees Celsius, which means we are given uh, the value of T1 minus T2. That's the temperature change. Okay, so the first equation on 5.21 was to calculate the area of the frame. Take note the door frame, and that's our door frame, which measures uh, 2,09 by 1,2. Uh, okay, so remember that area, it's length times width. So there we're just supposed to multiply length times width. So this is 2 point, uh, not 2, but question 5, sorry, 5.5. Two, one. All right. So question 5.21, we know that area is equivalent to length times width. So that is length of the door frame, uh, which is 2,09 by 1,2. Okay. So you multiply for the door frame, not for the door. Okay. So it's 2,09 times uh, 1,2. So if you are to multiply this properly, we are going to obtain an area of 2,5. Uh, 08 square meters. Okay, so that was the area uh, for the door frame. Okay, so take note, that's a door frame, this one. Okay, then we move on, on 5.22. Now it was calculated the change in area. Take note, what is it there? The change in area of the door, not the door frame, but the door. All right, so we are dealing with the door in this case, and the door, it measures 2 comma, uh, that's here, 2,08 and 1,19. Uh, so we know that the change in area is given by the formula. Remember this formula, guys. Uh, okay, so that's 5.22. The change in area is equivalent to two times the original area times alpha times the change in temperature. Okay, uh, in this case, we are dealing with... Uh, Okay, let's check, let's check, let's check, let's check back. We are given uh, that it's a steel door, okay? So it's a steel door in this case. So if we are to check on our formula sheet, we need information. So let's check the area first, uh, which is the door here. So the door is 2,08 and 1, comma, uh, uh, 2,08 and 1, 1,19, okay? So here, We've got our original area of the door. So let's just, the door here. All right, so the area of the door is supposed to be equivalent to length times width again, which is the original uh, length. We said we have got uh, 2,08 and 1,19. So you can simplify this, but that is what we have for the door, okay. Then uh, the change in temperature, we have the change in temperature. Take note on this information. We are given that the change in temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So which means we have the change in temperature of uh, 20 degrees Celsius here. Yeah? So that's 20 degrees Celsius, but we do not have alpha. 
but we can have our alpha because we are given that this is a steel door. So on our uh, values, let's check what do we have for the steel door in this case for steel. All right, so we have got uh, steel here, the linear coefficient of uh, steel. Okay, so there we have the linear coefficient uh, here of steel. So the linear coefficient of steel, which is alpha, that's 12 times 10 to the exponent of minus six. So we're going to use 12 times 10 to the exponent of minus six. Okay, so that's the value for alpha. So we are going to substitute that in place of alpha. All right, that's here. So our alpha, we say that's 10 times 10, uh, 12 times 10 to the power of six, okay? So alpha is equivalent to 12 times 10 to the exponent of six, all right? So uh, that's per degree Celsius. Okay, so that means we can substitute our values. So the change in area is two times the original area of the door. We are referring to the door, which is 2.08. So that's 2.08 times 1.19 times alpha, which is the linear coefficient, which is 12 times 10 to the exponent of negative six times the change in temperature, that's 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so with this, we can calculate everything from our calculator. So guys, I want you to use your calculator uh, properly. You're going to obtain something like 1,188 times 10 to the exponent of negative 10 in square meters. So that's the change in area. So make sure that you insert the, uh, the values properly uh, that, that that's easier, guys. It's as easy as, as that. Okay, so please revise as much questions as possible. We have got time to revise. Let's utilize this time. Okay, 5.23, the final area of the door, not the door frame, but the door. So we know that, that the final area is equivalent to the original area plus the change in area. So that's simply adding the two that we have. So that's 5.23. Uh, we know that the final area, that's the original area plus the change in area. All right, our original area, we had this part, which was uh, 2 comma 0 0.8 times uh, 1 comma. So I'm just going to write this, uh, that's our original area there. So we are given that our original area is uh, 2 comma 0 0.8 times 1 comma 1 9. So you've got your original area here plus the change in area, the change in area is representing this area that we calculated before. So we are simply adding this. So that's one comma one eight eight times 10 to the exponent of negative three. So you combine the two, we have got the final area. So this is our final area guys, which is going to be something like two comma uh, 476 uh, square meters. All right, so take note, this is area and the uh, area is uh, measured in square meters. Okay, so let's check the other part of the question. Uh, that's 5.31. Okay, 5.31 we are given, uh, let's see. 5.3 and 5.31 give one advantage and one disadvantage of high specific heat capacity of water in engineering, take note everything that we have in engineering. So let's check what we have here. All right, so I have the answers here. Uh, we are given that the disadvantage that we can have of high specific uh, heat, uh, heat capacity of water is that it need a lot of energy, okay? And a lot of energy is needed to heat it, okay? Then the advantage that you can easily retrieve the heat from the water that's the advantage you can that you can easily retrieve from the water but the disadvantage you need a lot of energy okay that's a lot a lot of energy is needed to eat it up so that's what we had uh we shall see uh the other part which is now on question 5.32 where we are given now uh that a copper bowl of 20 kgs is heated to 350 degrees celsius and then probed in two liters of water at 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, take note, calculate the final temperature of the copper ball. Okay, so we are given that. Okay, let's just remove some of these things here. The copper ball that we had originally, it was being heated to 350 degrees Celsius. All right, 
Then after some time, when it was dropped into water, which means by being dropped into water, it is going to cool down. And by cooling down, the temperature is going to drop. And this is the temperature that is going to affect the ball and the water is at the same time, which is T2. That is the temperature that you are being asked to calculate, which is the final temperature. All right. So remember, the copper ball had its heat, then it's cooling down. So which means the copper ball is going to lose uh, the, NA, the energy, which is the heat energy. So the copper ball has lost energy, while the water in this case has gained the, uh, the heat energy. All right, so we can take advantage of that too, because we know that the heat being lost, okay, I explained this one a lot of times. I think uh, by now we, we now understand this concept, guys. We know that the heat that is being lost is equivalent to the heat that is being gained in this case. Okay, so what lost heat in this case? That is the question. What lost heat in this case? Okay, if we are to check, we had the copper ball, which was at a certain high temperature. So that is the copper ball lost the, the heat, while water gained the heat in this case. So what is the formula for the heat? We know that the heat is equivalent to the mass times C times the change in temperature, uh, which is also equivalent here to the change in temperature. But for the copper now, we are here, we are referring to the mass of the copper. So you can just write as M, M, C like this for the mass of the copper, or just know that this is mass for the copper, okay? The specific heat capacity of copper, then the change in temperature now is going to be the original temperature of copper, which is T1, let's just write as T1 or T copper minus T2, all right? Then on the other hand, the water gained heat. So we've got the mass of water, the specific heat capacity of water, then the change in temperature is going to be the final temperature, which is T2 minus the original temperature of water. Uh, that is what we have in this case. So what we need is to calculate this value of T2 from, uh, from this part yet, sorry, this T2. All right, so the mass of copper, do we have the mass of copper in this case? All right, so let's check on our information. We are given that a copper ball of 20 kgs, we are given that the mass is 20 kgs in this case, all right? So we have got the mass of copper, which is 20 kgs, so that's 20 times the specific heat capacity of copper, which we can see from our information sheet here. All right, let's check down at this point. All right, so let's see what we are given here. So we need the specific heat capacity of copper. All uh, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Is it copper or is what? Okay, I was closing this down. Okay, so I was closing this. Okay, so that is specific heat capacity of copper here, which is 390 joule per kg degree Celsius. Okay, so that's 390 in this case. Okay, then for water, uh, it's 41 here. For water, it's 4187. Okay, so 390 and 4187. These are the values that we need there. All right, so. Let's take these values into our formula back here. All right, so that's it, okay? So we said here is 390, so we're gonna have uh, 390 uh, into T copper, the temperature for copper, all right? That was the original temperature for copper, the one that we are given here, the original temperature. It was 350 degrees Celsius. Take note, it was heated to 350. So we are going to use 350 there. So that's 350 uh, minus T2, the final temperature, the one that we do not know. The mass for water, what is the mass of water? We are given that the volume in this case, we are given in two liters, okay? So that's the volume in this case of two liters. So what is the relationship now between this and... Uh, uh, the executive and the volume. So we know that uh, a liter is equivalent to a kg, all right? So if it is two liters, that's two kgs. Okay, I, I think this proportion is direct. 
and the mass and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the mass is going to be two kgs. All right, that's two kgs. Okay, so I've got two kgs times. Okay, uh, the specific heat capacity of water, I think I showed you guys, it was 4187, okay, into T2 minus the temperature of water, which we said is 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, so how can we calculate T2? Let us combine our values in this case. So I want you to multiply these values 9, uh, 20 by 390, which is going to give us something like uh, 7,800 into 350 minus t2 uh, equal to two times 4187 so if you combine this is going to be 38374 into t2 minus 15 okay so i want you to expand the brackets uh the 7800 we multiply 350 and it will also multiply t2 okay so that's uh two million seven hundred thirty thousand all right equivalent to 7,800 7, times minus T2, that's minus, sorry, that's a minus there, that's minus 7,800 T2 is equal to uh, 8,374 8, times T2, that's 8,374 T2 minus uh, 8,374 8, multiplied by negative 15, it's going to be one, two, five, six one zero okay so please guys make sure that you use your calculator properly expand the brackets then from there i want you to collect the like terms so if you collect the like terms you're going to take the terms with t2 to one side of the equation uh so i'm just going to avoid working with negative i'm going to take this negative to the right hand side the negative uh 125,000 and so forth okay it adds to this value. So if you add these two, you are going to obtain uh, 285 uh, five again, 610 is equal to, I want you to transpose this to the right hand side. It means it was a negative. So when it comes here, it's going to be a positive. You add, so if you add the two, it is going to be 16174T2. Okay, take note, there's a T2 there. So to find T2 divided by 1674, both sides by 16. Okay, that's 161. Okay, 16174. All right, so that's uh, what you're going to have in this uh, case. So divide these two, we can have our T2. So guys, make sure that your calculators, you use them properly. So T2 is going to be the resultant if you divide the two there, which is 176.556 degrees Celsius. Okay, so remember this is temperature, which is measured in uh, degrees Celsius. So that was uh, our question. Uh, that was our question, guys. That was our question, uh, 5.32. Uh, having three marks in the total of this question on question five, which was... Uh, uh, on heat, uh, carrying a total of 15 marks. That's a lot, guys. That's a lot in exam. So I want you to revise, guys, as many question papers as possible before you write your final exams. But for now, that's what we had from Maison African Motives uh, till we meet again.